Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me today. Today I will be using FL Studio Beta for Mac and I will be showing you how to take one idea and merging it with another using a plugin called Easy Keys by ToonTrack. This particular plugin is normally in the context of a chord library where you can drag and drop different clips and arrange your own song. Almost like a remix tool, but for songwriters and it has a lot of preset packs that you can explore to have different vibes and different feelings. But I was looking into a little bit further than that like I normally do and I realized that you can load your own MIDI packs into it. So I was going through some of my older beats, this one in particular is from 2009, and I said, wouldn't it be cool if I could use the chords or the styles of these old beats and apply them to new beats and just keep reusing the same formula, especially this beat in particular, which I've sold back in my space days. <laughs> That's how far back this goes. So I'll play you a brief demo of what this beat sounds like. And what I've done before the video was export each instrument as a MIDI track. So really Trapanese style. <laughs> this is kind of like the birth of Trapanese um, now that I think about it. This is the first one that I did like that. But anyway, neither here nor there. What I have is a bunch of old VSTs I don't have no more. Um, here are the MIDI files for them. And what I did was I went into file under piano roll and did export MIDI file for each individual sound. Um, the piano, the pad, the harp, the lead in particular, which is very interesting. And what I'm gonna do is apply that to something new. So I'm gonna go to file, I'm gonna go to a new project. For this, I'm gonna use Easy Keys first, and then we're gonna use Centronic to actually pick our sounds. Easy Keys looks like this, it's a piano. What's cool about it is it'll detect keys as you play it. And then as you record keys into it, you can modify it using the circle of fifths. And then there's a chord library where you can go through presets and modify those as well. I don't want any of that. I'm gonna go to our old faithful website. Um, because Shrim Life 3 is coming out, I found one of their older songs called Swing. It has their chord progression here, which is four chords, which is perfect for this. It's in the key of C minor. The only thing, if you're drawing in a piano roll in FL, that you really gotta pay attention to are the numbers. So it's gonna be five, six, one, seven. So in piano roll, you can use the same key that they have. So go to helpers, C. So that's one. I believe that was third, right? So two, three, four, five. So five, six, one, and then seven. And that's really high register. So I'm actually drop this an octave, two octaves. Perfect. And then this one's a little bit too low. So I'm gonna raise it an octave, but it's the same degrees. It's still the five, six, one, seven. Now I wanna finish these chords by clicking every other key within the highlighted regions of our piano roll. And I've done this in previous videos. If you ever wonder why this works. It's just really simple to create chords using the numbers within scale highlight. Now easy keys very similar to scalar will detect what these are. So I'll make an extra key there so it plays all the way out. I'm going to easy keys, I'm gonna hit record, start from the top, hit play in our sequencer. So detected all the correct keys. It's telling me a C major. It's not, I would ignore that, but if you wanted to change it to C minor, you can before you record it. The only thing I'm interested in here is zooming in on these. That was this key of C minor, that was one, so that's correct. I'll take this uh, scissors tool, divide each of these chords up. I'll highlight everything, and now I'm gonna use browser MIDI. Normally, you would go through their packs I have quite a few add-ons, and what you would do is you go through the different sections of their preset songs. It's very much like a sample pack, but you could play these and drag them in. What I'm gonna do is play those within my chord progression. So as this humanization to your chords. I actually like that. So instead of using my piano, I'm gonna keep those chords, use that play style, hit replace, and I'm gonna drag this into my project, just like you would use Captain or Scalar or the likes. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that for now. And what I wanna do now is assign that to a new sound, probably something in Centronic, right? So let's go ahead and save this real quick. Do Centronic, I'm gonna pick a pad sound. You know, the Galaxy is my favorite right now. I am experimenting with the other ones, but the Galaxy sounds very futuristic. So synth pad, let's try some of these deep mods. Now we're gonna do the next sound. The next sound is a little bit trickier because it's gonna be a lead that was from my beat. So what I wanna do is trace the top notes of each chord and call that the lead, right? That's how we would normally do. I'll hit the record button and hit play. So 
So Easy Keys doesn't just detect chords, it detects single notes, but it's gonna have funny names next to them because it's trying to figure out which degree that note is, is within the given scale. You can ignore that when it's something you're creating intentionally. So I'm gonna split these up into four separate notes or four separate chord holders. I'll highlight all of them. I'm gonna use that browser MIDI again. It'll convert it into chords. But I'm gonna go to custom MIDI. I'm gonna go to that old song and I'm gonna pick the lead section So I'm dragging into this project. I'll make sure that these notes land within the chord. And most of them do, because we have scale highlight on, we can see that. The only one that fell off was this one here. That dark area is not in this scale. So what I'll probably do is move these down together. Boom, now it's back in scale. And what I gotta do now is make a new track for that. So I'm gonna do another Centronic. I'm actually gonna use a softer lead for this. I know there's some R&B leads in the old Moog stuff, which I believe is called Noor. There's like three different Moogs in one plugin. Yeah, that simple triangle lead. That works for anything R&B. Although my pad tells me this is not r and I'll go ahead and cut it, paste it. Let me get rid of this one because if you don't, it'll double play. So there's a double note there. What I'm gonna do is get rid of this one and maybe add an extra note there to kind of back it up. Now this one's one note off. I might move it down one or I might move it up one. Only one thing I don't like here is that this is in the wrong key too. Let's drop that down. Ah, so my progression was too high, but the spacing is still correct. So I'm just gonna drop these down to the tops of these chords and we'll fill in the blanks here. I think everything else is good. So you do gotta edit or tweak it a little bit, but I didn't have to figure out that melody. That melody was already sealed in the vault nine years ago. <laughs> now, last but not least, probably the most fun is that you can do this with bass too. We're gonna trace the bottom. And after a while, you get used to this workflow, especially if you have a lot of different MIDI songs that you already saved or exported, or you're downloading certain sample packs that come with MIDI files. This becomes second nature. Like, it'll take you five minutes off camera to put this together, and you'll be flying. Like, it's, ridic it's a ridiculous workflow. Let me make sure to <laughs> unmute Easy Keys because it won't listen to itself. Okay, same story. I'm gonna go ahead and chop these up on each chord where it should be. We got extra at the end there. We're gonna right click and remove it. We're gonna select all these, replace, custom MIDI. I'm gonna choose my bass this time. I have my bass pattern from the beat. I'm gonna hit replace. I'm gonna drag this to a track. I'm gonna go ahead and open up another Centronic. And I actually think I know why I got the lead wrong. Unlike the chords, the lead was just single notes. So it took on a different scale by default. I gotta remember, and if you start to experiment with this, is that set the scale before you detect something. All right, so we got the bass line here. We got Centronic here. Let's try Blau for bass or synth bass, the Classico. Paste it there. Easy keys, we're gonna get rid of this so it doesn't double play it, of course, and then mute it on top of that. Let's check it out. Let's see if it's in the right range. So I'm gonna select all these, move them up two octaves. Just make sure the overlap is correct. It's in the white region. We're good here, we're good there. Let's drop this an octave, cool. So it played an octave up, just like my original beat. Cool, and this extra note, we can go ahead and get rid of that now. Now this one, this picked up on the looseness of that other track. So I'm actually gonna quantize the bass. It should be the first note. Now that Centronic, that's a little bit too aggressive for how smooth everything else is. I'm gonna try to find like a bellish sound instead. There we go. So that's that. <laughs> that is Swang by the Ear Drummers, or at least it's chord foundation, using an old beat I made nine years ago to play through those new chords, keeping the same rhythm, the same tendencies of movement for bass, chords, and leads. 
What that means is that the implications of what this is doing, you could take this to any dimension that you want and reuse a whole lot of old beats, load in some new stuff from sample packs, all kinds of different things that you could come up with to make new original heat. Only thing you gotta figure out is what chords you're gonna use that day. You never really have to worry about humanization and play style ever again if you don't want to. I know I'm not. <laughs> what, what do they say? Be good or be good at it? Um, work smart and not working hard. And this is super clutch. Just add water, aka drums, and you're halfway there. So that's that. That's Easy Keys. That's Centronic. Hopefully you find a benefit to this. If you do, definitely leave us, let us know in the comments below what you think of this kind of workflow and how you've been coming up with your own stuff in the meantime. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, you can catch me on Instagram at MG the Future. Be sure to follow at Machine Masters as well. Until next time, peace. <laughs>